lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson. Are you looking for an above-average talk show that tackles kingdom issues and current events? Then join Elder Ernest E. Richard Jr. and the panel of the Pastor's Corner Podcast every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. Central. It's a show that tackles those issues that attack your day. It's the Pastor's Corner Radio Podcast here on Elations Radio. That's real talk for real people with real purpose.
Amen, amen. Wow, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Isn't that amazing? Welcome to Real Issues with Dr. Pastor Bello and the sisters. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are back, we are back, and we are back. It's been so long this overdue, and now I'm going to bring in my friend, my sister, Dr. Pastor Bello. How you doing? I am well. How are you doing? I can't complain. Uh, <laughs> bless is, as they say, bless and unstoppable. <laughs> One amen, is a day's amen. journey. Yes, 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 yes. So today, I miss this podcast so treats. much. We have special treats today. We have friends that's on the line today. Hello, friends. How are you guys doing? <laughs> we have on the line Dr. Danette. Uh, Dr. Net- Danette, are you there? Okay, and we also have uh, Pastor uh, Solomon. She is uh, Reverend hello. Solomon. Yes, hello. We hello. have her on the line. Yes, yes. So we are blessed to have on the line. I'm going to still keep trying um, to dial in Dr. Danette. I do know that um, she was at work, and um, she had an emergency to come up because she deals with COVID patients. Um, yes. Yeah, so um, so we, um, we're going to dial her up. But before we do that, we're going to pray us in. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, because you're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. You're a God of wonders. Lord God, we thank you because we're here in the land of the living. That means you still have a reason, mission, and a purpose for us today. We thank you, God, because we know we're not going to leave this show the same way in which we entered. Lord God, we're just so happy to have the privilege to be able to talk all about you and the wonders that you have done thus far. Lord God, we know according to your Uh, scriptures that you want nothing less for us than abundance in our lives. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So I did send out um, information that we will be discussing today, and I did that because I wanted, just in case people had to actually um, research and find out, you know, some more information. And I'm going to start today with um, my friend. Let me tell you a little bit about her. Um, She is uh, pastoring with her husband, um, Reverend Ikeem, and they are pastoring in Woodbridge, Virginia, Christ for Crisis Ministry. Um, She's also started her own nonprofit ministry. So we thank God for that. All in the midst, um, she actually has a uh, uh, establishment that she has for children, and she does an awesome job, so awesome. Let me tell you about that much. And she has her own book that's out, and that's just part one, because she's got another one that's in the works. We were so honored um, a couple months ago that we had her on Blessed Anointing Marketplace. Um, to tell us about her book. So now um, I'm going to bring her on. I want her to tell us about what uh, do she, what this, the kids experience, what have they went through um, during this COVID. How were you able to explain it to them? Yeah. 
Amen. Briefly, on what 
her emotions were towards her uh, patients. Hello, good evening. How are you doing? We're fine. Okay, sorry. Um, you know, COVID has been a challenge for healthcare workers. Um, as a frontline worker, it's not an easy task to come on a daily basis to take care of sick patients and try to help those that are not sick not to get this virus because it's 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 very very um, dangerous and it causes a lot of health issue underlying health issues with others that you know that gets it. So um, being in the healthcare field and coming in on a daily basis, you have to think about your family. You have, When you're leaving work, you have to make sure you don't wear the same clothes. You have to change your clothes. You have to wipe yourself down. When you get home, you just have to take a shower. You can't wear that same clothes. I'm coming. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have emergency going on, but I have to take this time out. I'm coming. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, it, it's a whole lot of stuff. So you have to... Basically, you're around your family, but you're not too close with your family because even as we work and we are protected, we have to still be cautious as, as to how we are interacting with family members because this thing is, you get it and you don't even know how you get it sometimes. Mm. Some of these people that are getting it don't even know. They don't even go outside, and they're getting this virus. Yeah. So it's really um, very unpredictable. Um, but it's a it's a challenge for everybody. Amen, amen. So um, I know you had a stand on your daughter going back to school um, because you know during that time they didn't know if they was going back, how they was going to handle it. You know it's so hard now to tell little Johnny to sit down. Nevertheless, little Johnny, sit down, keep your mask on, wash your hands, stop sneezing all over the place, put that back. I gotta sanitize this. Um, what are your uh, thoughts on children going back? Okay, it's a mixed feelings right now because um, my daughter's school is going back in person. They're not doing online. And the reason being is hybrid doesn't work because the kids go back two days or three days and then online at home for two days, you still can catch the virus if you go for one day. So... They're not. They're saying that it's not a logical way of doing um, with with the school system. So what they have put in place, which I have not seen, and I'll make my determination based on what you know. They have this rigid guideline. You know, the classroom sizes are smaller. They have plexiglasses on all the the desk. They are six feet apart. So in like she's going into third grade, so she's going to have instead of one or two third grades, it's going to be three because it's it's a smaller size class. They are going to do like um, lunch inside the classrooms, mm -hmm. um, hallway monitoring as far as action. It's going to be a smaller gathering. So they have all these protocols. Um, that they have in place, all the other schools that I have, I thought about withdrawing her from school, but the other schools are like, okay, we're still going to do in person and online. So I'm like, it doesn't make sense. Either you're going to do online or in person. So I yeah. just, I'm up to leave her there, but when I go and see what they actually have in place, if it's to my liking, I will leave her there, and she knows the rules because I've been teaching her and telling her what to do, and she's been pretty good. And, you know, a lot of people is out about doing stuff. I go get her ice cream. People are long lines. You see people gathering with their kids, no mask, playing, and, you know, running around, getting ice cream. They're out in the mall. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, you're doing all these stuff. So what about school that is, has a more stricter guideline? Right. How to their kids? But there's no guideline there. The lines are long. They're having fun. They're going to amusement park. So I, I'm just like, okay, <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense because you're saying you're you're knocking against the school opening, but you're doing stuff outside of the what the norm should be for CDC wow. guidelines. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Right. So when I go next week, I will see if the standards are there as what they said on paper. If it's there then, yes, she will be going to school, 
And I pray that for coverage over her life and the blood of Jesus cover everyone. Amen. But she has to have her education, and at some point we just have to deal with the situation. Unfortunately, um, online for me doesn't work. Because I have to go to work, I'm a frontline worker, so I don't have that option like other people to stay at home. Right. So um, I've spoken to parents, and some are like, no, they withdraw their kids from school. Mm -hmm. They're not going back, but they get they can telework, so it's okay. Um, I've done my teacher teaching job for the year. I've had it since March <laughs> up until May. I do not want to do it again. Uh, that thing gave me a lot of gray hair. I did not understand a lot of stuff. Uh, <laughs> thank God my daughter has a fast, she's a fast learner. Now she even teaching me how to do Zoom because I'll be Zooming. Like yesterday I was able to, I forgot she had a Zoom BBS class. And I'm like, I call her. She said, okay, mommy, I got my computer up. Um, what, is the, what is this? What is the password? And she was on, <laughs> she went on Zoom. So she's a fast <laughs> learner. Amen. But for me, I go on Zoom. I'm still trying to figure out which button to click and do all that. And she's like, okay, this is how you do it. So she will do well either way if it's online. But I, for me, I don't have that patience. I don't have that tolerance. I'm not a teacher. <laughs> so... I can't do it like other parents can. It takes a lot of work. It did take a lot. Um, one of the issues I did have when I submit her work, they could not find it in Google Drive. Oh, okay. And it's a lot of work they will give these kids, and you have to help them with all these science projects, these social studies, English, math. Right. So it was a whole lot we had to do. And when you submit the work, half the time they can't find it and they're sending zero grades. So I was, half of the time I was arguing in emails about my child's grade because she has to maintain a grade even though she was not in school. So it was a big challenge. So I had to start printing all her workouts, make PDF files, send it into the teacher, CC everybody that I know, like, okay, don't tell me you lose the work again. It was a lot of frustration. So <laughs> I'm not inclined to do that anymore. <laughs> you said you need a vacation. I need a vacation from teaching. It was it was a lot. Amen. Was a lot. <laughs> well, you know, so, I know you're busy, and I told him that um, you had a new uh, situation to just come in. And um, I appreciate you. I am well, going to bring I you. I was here talking, and my, they hear me talking. They thought I was maybe arguing with a doctor or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you should have watching me on the phone now talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? The good thing is later you can uh, spread the word to them, and they can come back and watch and see what a wonderful time that we have on this show and encourage them to join because we always call it Dr. Roger and friends. We love friends. Um, Dr. Kim, sometimes she's different. You. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate ma you. I appreciate Holy Mountain. I appreciate Senior Pastor, Bobby Bello. And, you know, God bless your ministry. Amen. God bless what you are doing. Amen. And I know many, many things are more in store for you guys. Amen. Amen. And we're going to continue to pray for you, Lord God. We ask you now, right now, by your mighty name, to Amen. cover her with the blood of Jesus. Lord God. She is one of your children, and you have placed her in this mission. Lord God, keep her strong. Give her strength. Give her wisdom and knowledge. Lord God, we ask you right now by your mighty name to never leave her alone. Lord God, keep whispering to her. Let her know that she is the chosen one for this mission in this season. By your name, we glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now go out there and do the work. You are you already armored because we're going to saturate you with the blood of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Have a great night, everyone. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, I still have on, I'll make them call it again. Let me make sure I got her off. But anyway, um, I want to go back, uh, before I go back to Dr. Kimmy, I want to go back to Dr. Solomon. Because she had a, a, another list. We were going to. So I want her to continue. And I do want to put in there that that's one of the struggles is that the parents have to go back to work. So the children have to go somewhere. 
and somewhere is very good, and you can make the cut and get into where, because uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, you got to make the cut um, to get into Reverend uh, Salome's school. Um, she not only teaches them during the uh, daycare, but she, I, I've seen the different videos. You can look her up, S-A-L-O-M-E, last name I-K-E-M. And she's two, it's two of them out there now. You know which one I'm talking about because it's the one where she's posing like, oh, I'm free. I don't have any worries. I pray about everything. I worry about nothing. Um, that's the picture that she has out there. Um, and you would see the different videos she do with the children. She is teaching them. Um, and, and it's good because they'll go back and they'll be able to teach others. So um, I want you to continue, Reverend uh, Salome, to uh, let us know all that um, that you have, uh, you know, continue on your list. Okay, so like I was saying, we all know that this is a challenging time for both parents and, 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 and the kids. But first of all, we as parents have to be strong for our children, right? We have to look out for them because they are looking up to us, came on unaware, nobody prepared for it. It's so devastating what is happening, they are so poor, some of them at home and all that. But we have to come forward. And as we are home, we should know how to mind our ways. Like I said, kids are copying a lot from us. Amen. And when they come, when they come to school, they come to get here. That's what they are showing us. You know, so we should be mindful as we are home, we are saying to be careful what be careful what we say. You know, and let us try to listen to them, like I was saying. Let us try to a lot of things are running in their mind. So let us try to listen to our kids and talk to them. We should not get tired of talking. Now is the time. Like I said, we should give them all the love and attention that they want. You know, we should them all the love and attention that you want. Amen. And let us start to encourage them in the Lord. Let us teach them. That's why the Bible says, teach, train up, train up your child in the way of the Lord. Let them know that, like for me, at this time, you know, I'm having more time with my teaching them the word of God. Every day we have our devotion time. So, this might be, so let us take it in a good way that this is the opportunity that God is for us to see our and teach them what we're supposed to teach them. That when they come out, they will know that you know somebody has to teach them something. Amen. Some of us, what I want to emphasize again here, some of us say that the kids are not talking to us because they don't trust us. We should try to face God in us and our kids. First of all, by the time you think about it, Start hearing it from one uncle or aunt's mouth. We should try to create that bond. Our kids to trust us. We should be as reliable. If anything is going on in their life, the first person they should want to is us. Mm-hmm. Let us not allow them to go outside to go and seek advice. They might get the wrong advice from outsiders. Amen. So let us learn to be trustworthy. Let us learn to be Amen. When this pandemic started, my daycare was, I was actually, you know, everywhere was dry, right? So there was no kids coming until I started <laughs> having a one child because the mom is a lot and she has to go to work. Mm-hmm. Most of the parents were working from home. Mm-hmm. Now it has started, you know, kids have started coming again and everything is coming like like normal. So we thank God for that. For what Amen. Amen. Now, before you continue, I'm going to jump back over to Dr. Kimmy because um, I want to know, because our, everybody's working from home, Dr. Kimmy, she owns a magazine. It's online. Um, she owns a radio show. She's a CEO of the radio show, um, which she was already online. So it wasn't like a big adjustment for her. But I want to know, how how was the radio 
as far as the audience. Because, you know, um, with the Blessed Network, Al's increased because you had nothing left to do but to tune in. You know, it wasn't any type of distraction that was around you. So what did you experience, uh, Dr. Kimmy? Um, our radio station is growing. Um, more listeners are calling in, um, wonderful podcasters, and I see nothing but growth and more to come. And uh, a lot of people are doing the podcast, and I was talking to Jerry Royce, I think, a few months ago. It was like, we, I mean, we've been doing this right. for... I forgot to say it right. Jerry Royce live, positive power. You know, we got to feel, we got to yeah. give his props. <laughs> well, yeah, he, finish, he is amazing, man. Jerry but, Royce, um, positive power, yeah. 21, is what united us. Um, uh, right. Jerry Royce is more or less, he was the one to guide and instruct us. He's like, um, in other words, our big uncle. He was the one that um, helped us to understand about media helped us to understand, in my case, about TV, helped us to understand about, you know, the different things that normal people would hoard to themselves. They wouldn't give out that information. And at any right. time, we are so grateful that God sent him into our life. That's how I met Dr. Kimmy, and I met so many other wonderful uh, people through uh, Jerry Royce. And Jerry Royce is still alive and well. We thank God he's doing it, um, and uh, later this year, I am going to try to work on his schedule, uh, Dr. Kimmy, to try to have him on, um, just like a reunion, you know, just to gather together, um, because he, he was the one that took a chance on us. You may as well say he took a chance. He knew nothing about us, um, uh, from, just from what he knew, and he took a chance. But um, go ahead. I'm sorry. You can continue. No, I was just saying that we talked a few months ago, right before, like back in February, and we're saying, like, you know, we've been doing podcasting for a long time, so this is just nothing new to us, and now all of a sudden you see a lot of people podcasting. So I, I really believe that we got in ahead of the game. So because of Spreaker, we're able to be on those high-end um, platforms such as iHeart, Spotify, TuneIn, Podcast Addiction, Addiction, and we also on Google and other platforms. And so we're on everything. I, so I want, I want uh, Reverend Solomon to know that, yes, everybody will hear you. Everybody will know you. Um, this is not a quiet radio station. It's out there all over. I was somewhere recently, and I seen um, iHeart. You know, it was one. I think it's mm-hmm. one down there where you are, too. Isn't it, Sister Kim, uh, Dr. Kimmy? Yeah, we it's are. It's a, a building. <laughs> right. You go and, on the podcast um, and search for Relation Radio. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Reverend Solomon, you, you, you get ready to be known because I know a lot of people that have crossed through Elation and crossed through the Blessed Network. And they are out there is um, uh, Minister uh, David Benton, and then we have um, uh, Psalmist, uh, what is her name, Shay, and we have so many, uh, Michelle, we have a lot of them that have crossed over, and God has blessed them. And, and I'm going to tell you, you know, everybody has an announcer. Jesus had John the Baptist, oh, yes. you know. And nowadays we have Jerry Roy, Positive Power 21. We have Elations Radio slash Elations Magazine. We have the Blessed Network. Um, and all of us are the type, um, and I can stand out on the limb and actually say this, that we're on the type that we will give you whatever we have to offer because that's what God wants us to do, and that's what we've been doing throughout this um, ministry. Um, another I question I want to ask, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> another question I want to ask, Dr. Kimmy. Uh, we heard from Dr. Danette. Are you uh, needing a vacation right about now, too? <laughs> Have you been the teacher, the principal, the uh, food lady? You know everything while uh, all this COVID was going on. Dr. Kimmy. 
I think she muted herself again. I'm going to tell her on a Reverend uh, Solomon. She does that a lot. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Is that question for me? <laughs> I told about that. I had yes, to tell I, her that she does that a lot. But well, have you been all yes, the positions? I, have you been the principal, the vice principal, the food lady, the uh, after study uh, person, you know, with your children during this pandemic? Well, um, before the school end, yes. And we are going to be doing the same in the first two semesters, um, doing uh, school virtually. So, yes. But I've been blessed. They're over 12 years old. And, well, only got Hannah's left. She's 11. But they really independent. They don't really want me around. Amen. They just Amen. do what they need to do. And they don't want to hear my mouth. So they just do their homework, and then they get back <laughs> on their games. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm they like, Mom, I'm gonna we you. did our homework. Yeah. I know. I'm going to tell you something that um, I, I finally realized, and I sent out something a couple of months ago, that the devil closed the building. He did not close out God. He just made people to understand to bring God into the house. You know, because we get stuck in our ways and we, we, we got a calendar. We got to get here. We got to get there. We got to get there. You know, we're dragging the kids up and down the highway or or they're older like uh, Dr. Kimmy's and we don't see them till later on at night and we barely get in a conversation. You know, it's not like um, the movies, like it used to be June Cleaver, if anybody is that old as me, uh, where she would cook the dinner, everybody come to the dinner, everybody discuss things. Um we, we don't have that time, but God said, okay, slow down. I'm going to slow you down. Okay, what y'all going to do, you're going to understand that I am God. So that's why the, the Bible reading was be still and know that I am God because we weren't still at all. We were not still. We were, we were busy hustling and bustling and chasing after things that didn't even need to be caught. We're chasing after money, and God said, I supply all your needs accordingly. So we, we, we were chasing after trying to get a house, and God has all our provisions. As a matter of fact, he owns everything. But he said, okay, y'all going y'all gonna to sit down, and you're going to take your time. What else happened that I've realized, wealth changed hands. If anybody noticed that, lower class became the lower middle class because of all the assistance that they were given. And the middle class, the upper class, were actually struggling. So they, at the hands of wealth, the uh, wealth actually changed hands during this crisis. And it's for people to realize that we're all, number one, we're humans. Nobody is more God over anybody. And two, we need to help each other. You, it was so amazing and touching how many organizations were pitching in helping and whatnot. Um, From March, from the time we got off the plane all the way up until now, we have served over 4,764 families, and it's still coming. You know, um, the other day, I wish I had took a picture. We had so much food to give out that I, I thought that, you know, somebody declared no more food for the next day as much as we had in there. But it's so many people that are starting to open up that normally do not even worry about such things, you know, because everybody was chasing after the dollar. Even if you look on the dollar bill, it says, in God, we trust. So that should tell you something right there. So I'm, I'm happy that everybody is realizing that this is time for change. Everything changed. People have started businesses that God's been whispering to them forever. People are actually understanding their child more. I had different people that let me know that, you know what, I really understand my child. I'm getting to know my child. My child is communicating with me. You know, if you stay in the house 24-7 with your child, you have no reason not to listen to your child. You know, I had people that said that they understand that um, they have to schedule time. Parent-teacher nights are, are important. They have to make sure that they get more involved in their child's life. I've had people that say they used to be, in other words, bench warmers, and now they actually had to go in the trenches um, of spiritual warfare and get out there and be on these prayer ministries. 
you know, because they were, you could ask somebody to pray, and if they gave you five-minute prayer, whew, they done did something. But now people are growing stronger in their prayer life because of everything that is happening. Everything that's in the Bible is there for a reason. We know that um, that I have, uh, through the eyes of Esther, it's once for the fashion drama in May, uh, March, and then it's again I have the conference, which will be coming up in November by Zoom. Uh, I've now made it into a 501c3, but the point I'm getting out is, is she even stated Esther for a time as this. So I'm, not, I'm reading it, but I wasn't applying it to what actually I'm reading in the scriptures. We did a lot of um, revamping through the eyes of Esther. We have mentorship programs now. Um, because we want children to understand that God loves all of us, and all of us need to get to work. He wants your time, your talent, and your tithe. He don't just want one or the other. He wants all of it because we're here to please him. We were never here to please right. ourselves. It never says we're going to own all the money in the world. If somebody sees it in there, let me know because I, God owns everything. So I, I, I really, truly believe but you're not going to find where it says you own, you will own all the money in the world. So, but we were chasing it like that's what we needed to do. Um, from my perspective, as far as Holy Mountain International Ministry, um, we were already a close knit church. We were already binding, but we had gained so many more new members. Our um, outreach has expanded. Our network has expanded. Um, those that don't know, I got a new um, app that's if I can say myself, awesome, um, that, allows, <laughs> that allows me to do so much. The website is coming out by the end of the month, uh, but it forced me to do something that we weren't doing, which is online giving. We started off with Cash App, and we moved over to Zelly. We switched it all into being able to do um, text, you know. So we have the different ways now to actually give without the person. On Sunday, it used to be people lined up with the envelopes. Now we see people just on their phone doing the giving off of the app. Um, it's just so remarkable how God, because I'm telling you, Pastor, tell you, I, that was truly my out of comfort zone trying to set up with this money because I wanted to test everything before I introduced it because I didn't want a situation where something got lost or something was uh, infringed, somebody tried to hack into it, you know, so I tried to test everything. We went back and re-looked our insurance, you know. We had to do a lot just before we actually launched each one of these. And we didn't do them all at one time. We did one, we waited. We did another one, we waited. So the point I'm making that all our ministries, you know, um, were affected. I'm going to tell you, Dr. Kimmy, what really affected me Woo, was today when I finally had to put down the sword and know I was not coming to see you this year for Elation's Honors. I know. That was so sad for me, but I was like, <laughs> sorry, family, God spoke. Um, we're coming back 2021 because any you know time you see college football, Anytime mm-hmm. you see college football canceling, it's serious. I know. It's college football. I was like, oh, I know. got to cancel. And God confirmed <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you all the brief that like, um, yes. I, had, I had traveled to Nigeria February, end of February into March, um, not knowing anything about COVID, okay? We got back into Germany, and we seen where flights were being canceled. Um, the story before that, when I got these flights, they were very reasonable, and um, it wasn't necessarily the time that we wanted to come back, but that was according to God's plan. We Sometimes we forget that. Um, but anyway, the flights were being canceled, but we were one of the two of the last flights to come back because they was canceling all the flights. So when we got back here to the States, we see people that um, – were you know certain people was going to one side, certain people was going. To, it was a whole different atmosphere through um, customs. So I'm like, what in the world? I still didn't put two and two together until the next morning when I called my job and I said, Hey, I'm back. He 
he's like, oh, well, you have to be quarantined for two weeks. I was like, I only went to Nigeria. Why I got to be quarantined? He's like, oh, you don't know? It's COVID. I said, what is a COVID? Look, <laughs> I was, it was clueless of what was going on. But from that day forth, um, the Holy Spirit just, I'm telling you, it just raised Dr. Bello and myself up. We've been running um, since this has happened. Um, and I'm going to tell you, what gives me joy is seeing the smiles on people's face because I understand now why God chose us and why our name at the end says out. I truly understand it now. Um, so, uh, Reverend Solomon, tell me your experience with uh, COVID and your ministry, both ministries, the new one that you just started, and we all – um, we congratulate you because we know that uh, we're waiting for the grand opening, which probably will be by Zoom. But uh, <laughs> we uh, congratulate you on it. So tell us about your ministry um, in Woodbridge, um, how it has changed you, but this has propelled you to a new direction, and also with your new ministry that you have. First of all, let me just highlight on what you were saying just now, that many parents, they don't actually understand or know their kids so until now. Mm-hmm. You know, some of us spend in the morning, the kids just go to school. By the time they come back, we are at work. By the time we come, they are sleeping. You know, so many parents don't know their kids so until now. And another thing, like I said before, we should take this pandemic in a good way, you know? Amen. The time and the opportunity that God has given us for us to train the kids that we have, for us to understand them, you know, the, in, in, the, the value in them that they need to have. And since the beginning of this pandemic, God told us that it's going to be soon. So at the beginning, you know, it was kind of shaky financially because we did not prepare for it. But well, we thank God for you, Doctor Bello, and your ministry. You, you, you were a big blessing to us. You know the food that you were sharing and all that, even to our members, was a very big blessing. They were looking forward to that all the time. So we want to thank and appreciate you for that. But our church was never closed. Because Amen. First of all, we knew from the beginning that only God that is keeping it going. So we know we should take all the necessary precautions try to keep ourselves ourselves safe by wearing the mask, washing of hands, and you know try to sanitize everywhere and all that. But the bottom line is the one that God has keeping it home. So our church was never closed. We are just without borders. We are um, one four fifty nine Jefferson David Highway here in Wood. Virginia, and our church was never closed. We were there all the time, especially us as the first family. We were there all the time. Like I said, we should be strong for others to follow. So we should be the example that are in the front line. We should be the example, and that is what we are. So we were never closed. We were always open and up now. At the beginning, people were not coming, but they online. We are with the first family, we are always at the church. But now people have started coming and thank God for that. You know, beginning to be normal and all that. Amen. Amen. So, Dr. Kimmy, what have you um, experienced? Because I know you have a church home. Have they started back like half, 50%, or what's happening with your um, church? Our church home is still currently down. We do everything online, and we have a strong feeling that we won't be back until next year due to the fact our church is pretty big, and so it's very it's very challenging to do the uh, social distancing. So I really believe mm-hmm. that we're going to resume back in 2021 and continue on having services online. And uh, it's different, but... Um, Oof. It's it's just been an adjustment. So I've been blessed to have still the opportunity to get fed, you know, elation 
radio podcasters, that helps a lot because I'm more of a touchy person and uh, I know. Uh, it's been so unreal, <laughs> so unreal. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm too. I, you know, it's so hard. Uh, Sunday we had a visitor, and usually when we have a visitor, we sing the song and we go around and we shake their hand or hug them. So everybody just had to put their hands up in the air like high five, you know. But we couldn't touch or anything, you exactly. know. And it, it's killing me because I'm telling you, I've done so many um, Zoom and Google Meetup lunches. Um, and uh, brunch and breakfast and coffee breaks um, to try to get my meeting done just so I can see people uh, because it's so hard when you're on the phone because you get distracted. If you don't have that face-to-face, you know, you get you get distracted. So it, it's taken me um, a lot to, you know, to get through this time because I'm like, Dr. Kimmy, you know, we're social. We, we, we like seeing people. We like meeting and greeting people. You know, and Reverend yeah. uh, Solomon, I guess I guess I can give up hope, and I pray I don't that we can have another. Um, she gave an awesome um, workshop slash uh, conference. Um, it was for uh, married couples, uh, men. I always have to be very specific because we are biblically based, so man and woman marital workshop slash conference. Um, it was good. I loved it because it was more or less where it was very informal. You can ask questions. You can interact. Um, everybody left out there blessed, you know, because a lot of questions that one person has, the same one might have. Um, yeah. It's a very funny one I've seen uh, uh, on one of these little things that be on. And the man said, um, why do women have so many questions to uh, to one answer that you've already given them? And the man said, um, for example, I told my wife that such and such got into a car accident. He said the first thing she said is, are they okay? He said, I don't know. I said that such and such just called me. They got in a car accident. He said, then his wife said, were the kids in the car? And he said, I don't know that such and such called me and said they was in and and what and it was so funny because at the end she told him, Well why are you telling me if you don't know everything? He said, I told you <laughs> So uh that's part of the uh, uh workshop slash conference that Reverend Solomon and her husband gave that day. And I'm telling you the truth, I was planning to invite more people because word of mouth is what gets Things out. You can give out a million flyers that people are going to ball up or either use it to sit the cup on. You can give out a, biz, a billion um, postcards, which they're going to write on the back of it. But word of mouth, when you tell somebody, hey, I went to this, this is awesome, or I've seen this, this is awesome, tune into it, this and that, um, you'd be amazed because word of mouth is more or less like the testimony of what happened. So, um, yes, yeah, it's I'm telling you, it's a lot that's been said. We've lost a lot of good soldiers. Oh, my goodness, during this COVID. I've lost so many. The most recent that actually touched me was um, Dr. Morris Cirello. If you don't know him, please, please look him up on Facebook. This man, some of those teachers he gave predicted this, okay? You can hear him talking about it. Um, he has an, uh, a fabulous legacy center, and long story short, God told him first, build me an army, which he did. He has an army. Um, and two, God wanted him to build his legacy center. I can't even describe what how it is. It's just too much. You go on uh, Morcerillo, or you can go on Legacy Center on Facebook. Um, you get the tour. It's in California. They are one of three that can actually host weddings because my spiritual daughter, she's getting married there uh, July, and we did that because we don't know what the situation is going to be. So once you throw out an invitation, you got to make sure that you have a place for people to be. Um, it, it's great. Prices are so reasonable to be San Diego, California. Um, and then they have a spa. they got a resort, a top-notch five-star you know, it's only one, one through five, five-star 
uh, chef, and it's Teresa's Restaurant. It's an Italian restaurant. Um, it, it's great. But um, he was a, a, I'm telling you, he was a true man of God. I was so blessed to be able to be there in January. Um, I thank God uh, that I listened to the Holy Spirit and went, because usually I tell pastor, go, go, go. But it was just on me. I'm like, you know what? I want my own anointing from him, which I did receive. Um, so I thank God for that. But we lost so many good men and women of God. Um, and that's just to tell you that if you did not tap into it, you missed it. That's what he used to always say. You missed it. Um, because he gave until he couldn't give anymore. I've never seen anybody that would give away five books just for five dollars. You know, because uh, I know it did not. He did not pay a dollar to uh, to to write the book, to actually publish the book. You know, to get the book there. I know that it wasn't a dollar, but he was so much of a giver. You know, so we lost a lot of pioneers, but. God called them home to greater places because, like I said, the Lord told them to build an army. He built an army. If you look at the people that will come just to hear something from him and everything was biblically based, and like I said, during the latter part, there was a lot that was coming to pass, which we did not even know. But you start putting two and two together when you start listening to it. So God taught us so much. Um, we do have to try to end. I, I have invited Dr. Kimmy to be part of our friends. Um, I invited Reverend Solomon. So, you know, I want her to uh, pray over it, um, and of course, ask her husband. And um, just let us know because, you know, we have friends that pop in and pop out and pop over um, because I, I, I want her as part of it because she she's the one that actually, I'm telling you, if you get her book and look her up, S-A-L-O-M-E, last name I-K-E-M, she has a book. Um, if that information is not there, do what I did, type of, type of thing. I was listening to the show. I'm interested in purchasing your book. Um, you need to get the first one because she's coming out with a second one. So if you don't get the first one, oh, well, you're just going to have to buy two because that's the second one that's going to be out. Um so, uh, yeah, I want you to uh, look her up. Um, before we end, I want her to tell us all the deets about her new um, actual ministry, which is a 501c3. So the ball is over to you, uh, Reverend uh, Solomon. Yes, I'm so excited, and I found one for what he's doing. Um, I found one. Um, we have, I have an uh, organization now because my daughter, my five-year-old daughter is the sickle cell anemia. So we have a foundation called Inborn Sickle Cell Foundation. We're helping kids back home in Africa because Africa, sickle cell is like a death sentence. You know, when I gave birth at the hospital and they told me that my daughter is sickle cell, I said, the first thing that came to my mind, I said, I don't know God cannot give me something that I'm going to take back. You know, the things of God make it one rich and has no sorrow to it. So that's what came to my mind. Because back home, when they said you about people, they said it's like a death sentence. Like, oh my God, your daughter is going to die very soon. My daughter is happy in all your opportunities and meditation and all that. So we thought, to ourselves that we should open this organization to help back home, you know, with their medication and all that. Some of them, they are very poor, they do not even have to have this and this kind of fitness. So, but very, very unfortunate. But I thank God we are helping them now when everything is going on fine. Very soon we'll be doing the launching. We are started already. Amen. So how can I get in touch with you, Reverend Salome? My number is 571-991-4520. Amen. And Dr. Amen. Kimmy, we're going to have you for last because I'm going to pick your brain through this. Because Dr. Kimmy, she don't tell everybody everything. She gives you just a little taste. You know how if you go to... Um, <laughs> 
a restaurant and they give you a little appetizer and you're looking around like, I'm, I don't really want to ask for more, but I really want some more. Uh, but um, we're, I'm part, uh, one of the ministers at Holy Mountain International Ministries, um, Senior Pastor General Overseer, which is Dr. Bombadelli Bello. Um, I'm so happy and excited. Um, through this COVID, God has worked through our ministry. We have the Bellows Legacy Center in Okiabe, uh, Nigeria, which will be coming soon. It's so much um, to say. We will be having a hybrid OR on the back. We have patients on the front for women, infants, and children over in the other part of the land that uh, someone uh, who was blessed to get. Uh, we will have over there a library. The library is for STEM. So they'll be able to understand science, technology, um, engineering, and mathematics. We Joyful, my daughter, Joyful Center will be there, and that's how we're going to zoom into the children in the neighborhood. Um, we're trying to start off at least once a week to have something for them to look at, even if it's a movie, um, which will be actually in the center. Um, if we had to take an average of how big this center is, I, I can truly say it's all together, maybe about four and a half, five acres um, of land. It will be parking. We have a pharmacy. We have wellness where you'll be able to go over there, um, exercise. Um, you will be able to, if you have you need counseling, we have counseling. Um, we will have um, once a week where they will be able to get fresh fruits and vegetables, um, different holidays. They can get chicken. Um, and we have so much that, <laughs> that's going on over there. Um, it, it's just amazing. Um, and then, of course, the church, we, um, we are building the next phase. is just the back half where we're going to have the actual um uh, Christian school in the back. The child will get free breakfast, free lunch, and a take-home dinner. Uh, we will get sponsors to help us with that. Um, also, God has established for us to have and fully functional adding RAF um, uh, investments, which we do export um, to different countries. Um, and we're able to do that. We do 20-foot, 40-foot, and row row. Um, we are authorized to do that part. Um, coming soon is our, both here and in Nigeria, our actual dealership. I'm working out with some people now to get that established. Um, then, of course, I say through the eyes of Esther ministry, um, we got that already done. Um, the outreach is also becoming outreach slash community because we're doing a lot of different things for the Beltsville community, which is the area that we are in. So, like you see, it's, it's a lot. I'm quite sure I'm, I'm missing something. Um, oh, IRF Publishing. We publish. Yeah, uh, we do have three different clients now um, that we're helping with their um, publishing. Um, so, this is just been, uh, I'm going to tell you this much. The Bellow Legacy Center, IRF Publishing, IRF Investments, um, Through the Eyes of Esther, um, Holy Mountain International Ministry, Outreach slash Community, um, all that was from March to now that God has given us, and they are functioning. Um, that's why I'm always doing something. But I'm, ha you know what? How many people can say they're having fun at their job? I'm having fun at my job. I love working for God. He's my CEO. He's my CFO. You know, he's my uh, director. He's my chief. Um, I'm, I'm having a blast. Um, I did uh, fire my job. Um, April 10th, I've never looked back. God has provided everything for us. Um, and um, that's the deep about me. I'm on um, Facebook, uh, Pastor Rhonda, one word, Bello. Um, you can reach out. I'm happy to be honored to be on the platform of Elations Magazine and Elations Radio. Um, God is so good um, because he paired me with Dr. Kimmy, the one and only um, she's coming up next because when she finished, we're going to ask her um, to pray us out. Um, she's not going to tell you. We do have Elation's Honor, which we will have the honor of having it next year. Uh, you should have came last year. We got a blast. But you know what? We're going to make sure that it's double-double um, next year. Um, at Elation's Magazine, um, where you will see that coming out soon where you can actually go online. Uh, when I say coming out soon, it's been out, but you'll see it again, you know, starting back. Um, and she has a whole platform 
of people on the radio. Go to Spreaker, go to Our Heart, um, go to Google, go to probably Amazon, all of them. You name it, she's there. Um, and um, that's really, I don't know, I ain't going to lie, I don't even know how she do all this. Because, um, she, like she said, her oldest is in the 11th grade. Um, but, yeah, I, I really don't. Uh, but we thank God for all her wisdom. Um, so, Sister Kimmy, uh, Dr. Kimmy, let us know how we can get in touch with you and give us the honor of praying us out for this evening. Uh, Reverend, uh, Reverend uh, Salome, I thank you. Um, I bless you. I ask God to never, never leave you alone, to continue to lay his hands upon you, your ministry, and your family. I ask the Lord to open up the heavens and shower down abundant blessings upon you. Keep your head full of fresh oil, and keep wisdom flowing through you in the mighty name of Jesus. Dr. Kimmy? Amen. This is Kimmy Kim, and um, thank you so much, my sister. You are doing so much. Oh, my goodness. You have probably like 20 pages, and it's still not enough. (laughs) You, I, you're well, I, busy, and I don't want you to really say too much because the Holy Spirit might talk to Pastor tonight, and I'll be working on something else. <laughs> <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you, I'm like amazed by your energy, but um, I just want to thank you so much. And you can reach out to me on all social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, my email address is. K Robinson at elationmagazine.com or the magazine is elationmagazine at gmail.com. And uh, I'm just grateful for purpose living. One thing I have come to learn, no matter what we're faced, we still have a purpose. And when God says to stand in the midst of the storm and focus on him and don't get out the boat and look back, stay focus on him. Because really, um, like you said earlier, Pastor Dr. Bello, uh, we're not. It's not going to be flo- uh, the Corona that's going to cause the end of the world. He said he's coming back with fire. So this is just a warning for us to get our lives back in order. And like you said, spend time with family. And sometimes we can overlook our schedules and not spend time with people that matter the most, such as yourself, God, family, and friends, because. Work will come and work will go, but one thing I can say, time and people are irreplaceable. So with that being said, I thank you so much, my sister. I love you. And uh, let's go to the Father in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you once again for a wonderful, good podcast. Thank you for Pastor Dr. Bello for her, oh, my goodness, her passion for you, Father God. I thank you for the sister's who came on and shared their ministry and what they've been doing throughout the COVID-19, it sounds like women, we are still busy for the Lord. No matter what we're facing, COVID-19 cannot stop us because you know why? We have you on our side. And you said if I am for you, who can be against us? So, Father God, we thank you so much for your protection. We thank you for your staff and your rod. Your staff gives us the um, opportunity to know that we are protected by you and your rod correct us. So we know we need a correction um, before the COVID-19 because there are times we are too busy to just spend time with you and spend time with family. And I'm reminded, you know, time is the one thing that we cannot get back, Father God. So I thank Amen. you for this time of devotion with you, getting back to my first love, getting back to the word, getting back to knowing what really matters. What really matters is where are we going after to, after we live on earth? Either we're going to hell or heaven. We only have two options. So, Father God, thank you for purpose living. Thank you for the word. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for family like um, Pastor Dr. Bello and her husband and the other two sisters. It's amazing to bring sisters together. It's amazing how we can just unite and build upon each other's strengths. So, Father God, I thank you so much for real issues. It's going to be amazing time. Um, I can see it. I can see us coming back together in 2021 and just laugh, not laugh, but because 160 plus people, thousands have died, but we're going to continue praying for the families. But knowing that with you, all things are possible. And I pray that um, whatever is said, 
what's said on this podcast can be beneficial for those who don't know you, touch their hearts, let, let them know that this, too, is not a host. You are giving us signs and wonders. We are living in the last days. We are living in the perilous times. You're giving us a wake-up calling. So, Father God, touch their hearts. Only you can open up their hearts. We can only deliver the message. And with that being said, we thank you for Jesus who died on the cross, but he got up with all power on the third day, and now we have victory in him because he conquered death. So, Father God, thank you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. We love everybody, Pastor Bella and myself, Dr. Kimmy, uh, Reverend Salome. We love everybody. We can't wait to see yeah. you back next. We want you to join us on Facebook, or you have the option of actually calling in to our link, which is 646-564-9842. Go out there and be a blessing to someone. We're here to serve God. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Glory Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I may not know what you're doing. 